Good day and welcome to SL Bricks Insight, where we look at what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now, today the Russian Foreign Minister, Sergei Lavrov, has just announced that the BRICS countries have decided to temporarily suspend the process of admitting new members to the organisation. This decision has been taken in order to allow time for the development of new membership criteria for uh, the people who are one well, of the countries that are actually queuing up. Now it's anticipated that the association is now going to create a special integration model for new members, which will be qualitatively different from similar procedures in other international blocks. Now, the decision to temporarily suspend the process of admitting new members was taken over by an overwhelming majority of the members, according to uh, Lavrov. He stated that it's necessary to digest the new arrivals who've doubled the composition of the organisation in the last six months. Now, it's also become known that as part of joining the BRICS, categories or steps will be introduced. What exactly they are has not been disclosed as yet. However, the head of the Russian diplomatic service highlighted that the association's plans to implement the concept of partner countries. Now, this is going to be an important step before they become a full member of the organisation. Meanwhile, the interest in the BRICS is on the rise globally. Yesterday, the Russian presidential assistant Yuri Ushakov revealed the number of countries that have submitted applications to join the organisation uh, are, are huge, there's around 30. Now these include Azerbaijan, Algeria, Bangladesh, Bahrain, Belarus, Bolivia, Venezuela, Vietnam, Honduras, Zimbabwe, Indonesia, Kazakhstan, Cuba, Kuwait, Morocco, Nigeria, Nicaragua, Pakistan, Senegal, Syria, Turkey, Thailand, Uganda, Chad, Sri Lanka, Equatorial Guinea, Eritrea and South Sudan. Also, adding to that list, uh, Turkey's expressed an interest in joining BRICS, viewing the, this intergovernmental organisation as a viable alternative to the European Union. Now, this was announced uh, a couple of weeks ago by the country's foreign minister, Hakan Fidan, uh, during his visit to China. I mean, he believes that the move will significantly expand the opportunities uh, economically for uh, that are available to Ankara. The Republic of Zimbabwe is also interested in joining BRICS, according to the country's Minister of Defence, Opa Muchinguri Kashiri. She stated that the organisation offers favourable conditions for free trade with other countries and promotes economic growth based on mutual respect, common progress and prosperity. Furthermore, she expressed confidence in the ability of the BRICS to resist the dominance of Western powers as the organisation is capable of promoting a more balanced global agenda. She considered the cooperation mechanism created within the bloc to be effective in developing ties between countries with the global majority. The Russian Deputy Foreign Minister, Sergei, uh, Sergei Rybakov, has recently outlined the conditions for joining the organisation. And he says, it's crucial that any prospective BRICS member does not engage in the imposition of illegal sanctions or restrictive me measures against other BRICS countries, particularly Iran and Russia, he emphasised. Now, it's important to recall that the organisation initially brought together Brazil, the Russian Federation, India and China. Then subsequently, South Africa became the fifth member of the organisation. It joined the previous four that had been involved. Now, the next phase of the expansion was in August 2023 at the Johannesburg Summit. And it was anticipated that as of January the 1st this year, uh, the bloc would comprise Argentina, Egypt, Iran, Ethiopia, the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia. However, Buenos Aires subsequently withdrew its application and Saudi Arabia has not confirmed its membership, but it does fully cooperate currently with the various committees and parts of uh, the foreign ministers meetings, etc. So it's also worth noting that Russia is currently chairing the BRICS in 2024 and Vladimir Putin stated the focus of Moscow's efforts would be improving the foreign policy coordination of the particular states. He also highlighted the need to 
enhance the association's energy and food security to expand the role of BRICS in the international monetary and financial system and to strengthen its presence in other key areas, including science, high technology, healthcare, ecology and sports. Now, on the financial and monetary system, BRICS is preparing a system for trading, clearing and settlement of transactions on national currencies called the BRICS Bridge Platform, the details of which are expected to be announced at the BRICS Summit in Kazan in October. So we're all looking forward to that. Now, the expert community notes that the pause in admitting of new members to the association is due to the desire of the current members to work out the issues of the further functioning of the bloc in as much detail as possible. I mean, to them it's essential to determine who's eligible to join the common institutions and to define the future vision for the partner states. I mean, the expansion of BRICS should be more than just a quantitative change, it should be a qualitative one as well. I mean, the, long, the organisation has long been an association of five independent regional centres in various parts of the world. Nevertheless, there's an increasing number of individuals and entities expressing interest in joining the bloc, and for this reason, the criteria for membership risks becoming significantly blurred, said Fedor Lukyakov, who's the editor of the magazine Russia and Global Affairs and the scientific director of the Valdai Discussion Club, who is well worth checking out, by the way. He said it's just not feasible for BRICS to open its doors to all countries at once, as this would result in the country, uh, the organisation become an amorphous community. So to avoid this outcome, it's essential to establish transparent, clear and consistent criteria for membership. Now, I believe this is precisely what all the current members of the association will be doing during the chairmanship of Russia and then potentially uh, Brazil, looking Yanov states. Now, there are numerous instances of effective roadmaps for joining international blocs. I mean, to become a, a member of the European Union, for example, a country must first obtain a candidate status. Following this, there are lengthy negotiations which uh, during the state's compliance with the necessary criteria is checked. It's probable that the process of joining the BRICS will be similar to some of those procedures, but not all. It is unlikely, though, to be as regulated by the same stringent requirements as the EU, in which the member countries are made to transfer a large part of their sovereignty to the unelected supranational body. Or, as I like to say, sell their soul to the devil. Nevertheless, the introduction of such levels as candidate and observer before becoming member is expected. Now, it should be noted that the BRICS doesn't have centralised structures. So the process of the integration of new members is as follows. Officials from different countries responsible for certain areas like finance, uh, foreign affairs, etc. meet up and discuss further issues that, for their joint work. Now, it's possible that new institutional bodies could be or will be created representing a further state uh, process in this uh, of integration. However, that's never been typical of the association so far, according to Lukianov. Now, Stanislav Tikachenko of the Department of European Studies at St. Petersburg University has stated that the BRICS countries will not be adopting the European Union style integration model. He said, the EU is an intergovernmental association with supranational institutions. In other words, the governments there, participating countries, transfer a large number of the powers to the supranational level and give them up for their own level. Furthermore, the organisation has certain requirements that all members must be fulfilled. He said, now, BRICS will not encroach on the sovereignty of its member states. Furthermore, the Asian states like China and India uh, of the BRICS are particularly focused on maintaining their independence. I mean, the association function as follows, have regular meetings, discussion of key issues and agreement on common positions on world problems and affairs. Then each country implements, introduces uh, and agrees on what was done in accordance with the procedures. I mean, Tikachenko noted that Numerous expert institutions in India, China and Russia are currently evaluating the criteria for entry in the various levels. Now, 
Let's look at the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, for example. One of the conditions to join that is the existence of a common border with at least one of the member countries. This is not currently a requirement of the BRICS, but it certainly makes a lot of sense. However, the work does continue, and I'm confident that the membership picture, as well as the general direction of the, um, the organisations developed, will be clarified. Lavrov's statement on the BRICS partner country system has one objective, to temper the enthusiasm of those who were prepared to join the association immediately. Furthermore, Tikachenko suggests that India may have actually exerted some pressure on the other members, particularly Russia and China, to make a pause on the issue of adding new members. I mean, that's because it was so quick after the last group joined. In fact, it was only six months, and by the time Kazan comes around, it's certainly only going to be nine. I mean, although Russia does consider the most effective way to advance its national interests is to ensure the widest and most rapid representation of the world's regions and BRICS. Meanwhile, China, to a great extent, India, believes that the organisation needs to go beyond the soft form of integration uh, typical of the Asian states. Anyway, opposing the expansion of BRICS would allow for a more comprehensive analysis of the association's future trajectory, according to the political science Ivan Lezan. He said, the current members of the organisation have accumulated a number of complex issues that have to be resolved before new members can be accepted. I mean, for example, the process of introducing the single currency uh, or the BRICS currency or the payment system is still a significant point of contention and it really needs to be resolved. I mean, it's obvious that BRICS represents a distinct agenda that differs significantly from that of the West. However, it needs to be given further meaning, and one of the key aspects of this process will be the development of the clear membership criteria. I mean, the first question that needs to be answered is whether BRICS participation is compatible with membership of other associations, and we don't mean the, the UN, but for instance, Turkey is a member of NATO. This raises the question of whether it will become a red line. I mean, Lausanne notes that it would be beneficial to consider the degree of sovereignty of the countries that wish to be part of BRICS. I mean, BRICS is a relatively young association and it should aim to ensure that its membership shares a similar view of the world and what they would like it to be, i.e. a similar um, to Russia, China, etc. and a multipolar world. I mean, these issues are, are something that needs to be addressed. Now, with regard to Belarus, which is a neighbour of Russia and a close ally, there's a strong possibility that it may be invited to join uh, the BRICS because it enjoys such cordial relations with other members of the bloc, particularly Russia and China as part of the Belt and Road Initiative. Plus, it's on very good terms with India, so it may be the exception. Anyway. In the process of uh, Belarus joining the uh, SCO, its integration into the organised uh, structure will help mince economic imposition. Anyway, so we shall see what happens in the future, and I'm sure the enthusiasm of the 30 or so other countries that want to join BRICS will not be dampened by the pause, and if anything, make them uh, more eager to join once they know what the criteria is and you know what they're really getting into. So there's so much more to look forward to with the BRICS in its pursuit of this changing uh, the world into one of multipolarity. Thank you for watching and please like and subscribe. If you've enjoyed this video, you can help me fund the channel and the website seobricsinsight.com by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the screen. Thank you and see you all again soon. Thank you.